In this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect a custom domain to render. So I've deployed a GitHub project to render. And if I go to the dashboard and then to my project, you'll be able to see it. So it is a just a very simple to do list. If I click on it, I can essentially show you it. So we'll go to to do site. And then as you can see, we're using the current render subdomain. So if I was to copy this to the clipboard, paste it in, you can see what this is. It is a very simple to do list site. And what we're going to do is connect a custom domain to this so it looks a lot more cleaner and professional. So the domain registration company I'm going to use is Hostinger. I've already got my domain here registered and we're going to connect this. But you can connect any domain on any other domain registration company. And the chances are I've made a tutorial video showing you how to do it for your specific company. This is just a general overview though and I'm going to show you using Hostinger. So once you are in your project, you need to go to settings here on the left. And then once you're in the settings, if you scroll down, you will be able to find custom domains. Now from here, you can click add custom domain and you need to then find the domain and enter it in here. So for me on Hostinger, we're going to connect this one, knowledgebaseonline.com. So what I'll do is I'll click on it. We are going to need to go into the back end of the domain anyway. So we'll copy the domain from here. And I'll just go ahead and paste it in. So we're connecting knowledgebaseonline.com. We'll click save. And it's going to then take us to this window where we need to add two DNS records. So it is a very simple job. So let me show you how. So go to your domain and you need to go to the DNS area of your domain. This is going to be different depending on what company you're registered with. But for me, I'm going to go to DNS slash name servers. And what you need to do is make sure you're on the default name servers and also make sure that it will probably be a good idea to reset the DNS name servers if you have this option, just so you're not connecting your domain to anything else other than render. So I'm going to reset mine and then we're going to add these two DNS records. I'll show you how to do it and we'll get everything connected in a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and add DNS record number one. So we need to add a CNAME record. It needs to be for www pointing to this URL here. So we'll click copy and then remember CNAME www. So we'll go to our hosting company, then we'll go type CNAME for the name, we'll type www and then we'll paste in this URL here. Now, as you can see, in my case, it is conflicting with another record. So we're gonna go ahead and find that. So we're looking for CNAME www. So it is this one. We're going to click delete and this is only if it's conflicting you are going to need to delete the record and then as you can see the error has now gone and we can click add record so that is dns record number one added we can click verify but it can take a short while to actually connect it so now we need to go ahead and add the second one so we've already added this one let's go ahead and add an a name or an alias record pointing to this url here now, if our DNS provider does not support a name or alias, we can use an A record. So let's go ahead and have a look if we support a name. So we'll go to our hosting company. We're going to look for a name or alias. So as you can see here, we don't actually have a name or alias. Yours may. So if yours do, you can go ahead and follow these instructions here. Because our DNS provider does not support a name or alias, we're going to use an A record. So we'll copy this and then we're going to use an A record pointing to this IP address. So we'll go A record for the name. I'm going to keep it on at because it doesn't tell us to enter anything else. Then we'll point it to this IP address that we've just copied from here. Then we'll click add record. And again, we've got a conflicting record. What we'll do is we'll just remember this IP address 216. We'll add the record and then we'll scroll down and we'll just remove the conflicting record. So this is the record we've just added. We're going to remove this A record here. So then we've clicked delete and that's been removed. So now we've added these two records here and that is literally all you need to do. Now, what you're going to have to do now is be patient. As you can see, that one has just verified, no problem, but it can take up to 48 hours to verify this. So be patient, click verify and keep waiting. I would wait like one to two hours. If it isn't verified in one to two hours, check you've entered in these DNS records correctly. 
I'm going to just wait and I'll just show you it verified and working. So it's been about two minutes. I've just clicked verify for the last time. It looks like it's going to work straight away. As you can see, the certificate is pending. This is the SSL certificate. So this can take a while as well. But what we'll do is we'll copy it and see if it's working anyway. No promises though, but if we go to incognito, we can go ahead and click on it. We'll go and enter it. And as you can see, the domain looks like it's connected. Then we've just got knowledge base online, the root domain, which is working as well. So that is all you have to do. Just wait for this certificate to be green as well. And you're all up and running. I hope that video helped you out.